Um, and then also, apparently, there is a QR code on the front of your bulletin now. Does everybody see that? You can, if you like to use QR codes and would like to use that, it will take you to our website. So it's a quick way to get to our website if you want to look at something or check anything out uh, during worship. Um, I'm supposed to read this probably. There's a new way to go directly to our church website. <laughs> Scan the QR code on the front of the bulletin and it will take you directly to, I said that. You can give that way. You can view news updates and you can see past sermons along with a host of other things. Um, so if my sermon's terrible today, just go watch that one during it. So I'll be good. Uh, just watch another one. Um, <laughs> the photo directory photos are happening again today um, with John Payne's studio from 12 to 3. If you've not signed up and you want to have that done, please see Pastor Paul, and he'll try and find a slot to fit you in today for that. Um, There's plenty of room. Plenty of room. Come on out. <laughs> Uh, also, with Pastor Paul's a new members class that will happen um, today, and then again next Sunday on the 16th for anyone who's interested in, in kind of formally joining our church family or just learning more about Calvary. So um, if you're interested in that, that's today and next Sunday with Pastor Paul. If you want to stay for that today, he will gather you here in the worship space and you can walk together to where you're going. Okay. Um, also, our stewardship campaign is continuing. Um, there is a new impact card you'll see. Oh, I've got one. Here we go. In your bulletins, this one um, is about Beth Spahn and Godly Play. She's our Godly Play teacher. And so you can read that to hear more about it. Um, and then, do you, is there more you want me to say about that? No. Okay. That's our, that is our, uh, our impact card for this week. Um, and then finally, youth are meeting today like we do each Sunday. Today we are um, going to try and play guitars together. And then we're going to play some games. Pray for us, because I, I know four chords, um, <laughs> but it should be fun, and, and even if you don't have a guitar, you still come, and we'll sing some camp songs together. It'll be great. We'll play some games and have a devotion. Okay, that's all? All right. Let's join together with the music of the prelude as we prepare our hearts for worship. you're able and face the baptismal font. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness. We confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven, and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty and most merciful God, your bountiful goodness fills all creation. Keep us safe from all that may hurt us, that whole and well in spirit we may with grateful hearts accomplish all that you would have us do, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Good morning, guys. Glad you all could come today. So in our gospel reading, we have a story of these 10 men that um, Jesus passes along the road. Well, these 10 men have a disease that nobody wants to be around. It's one of those that people shun them for having this disease. They don't even want to be near them. So they kind of keep their distance from Jesus, but say, can you please help us? So Jesus cures them. He takes away the disease so they don't have to live their life that way anymore. And nine of them walk away. One of them turns around and he says, thank you. So that's what the gospel is about today, is that gratitude that we should show, right? So there's a lot of times in our lives that we can tell people thank you, right? What are some things that you can tell people thank you for? When can we say thank you? Maybe that's a better question. Yes. Okay, if somebody gives you something or you give something to somebody else, that's a time to say thank you. Yes, Finley. If they help you, yes, that's a time to say thank you, right? Thank you. 
There you go. Well, you know, people need savings sometimes, right? Whether it's that drastic or not. But when people, you know, save one another, right, or they help each other or they give something, those are all great times to say thank you. Now here's the question. How? How do you say thank you? You use your mouth and vocal cords. You just simply say thank you, right? Are there other ways to say thank you without using your mouth? Okay. Give a hug. Oh, that's a great thank you, isn't it? You can use sign language. Do you know what it is? Simple, right? Thank you. Anything else? A kiss, yeah. Bake. Yeah. Give them a gift. Bake cookies. Send them a card, right? But there's a lot of ways to say thank you, right? Thank you should be one of the easiest things that we say, but you know what? We don't do it very often, do we? Maybe that's what we need to do a little bit more of. Find ways that you can tell people that you appreciate them. It may not always be in words. Maybe, you know, mom or dad did, went out of their way to come see you at a game, right? Okay. Um, but maybe mom or dad spent their time doing something for you that you, you know, helping do the dishes or cleaning your room or just simply putting your clothes in the laundry hamper, right? Those are ways you can say thank you, aren't they? But that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to live a life where we are grateful for what we have and we show other God's love through those simple little acts of kindness, those simple acts of love. So that's what I want you to think about this week, how you can show your gratitude and how can you show God you're thankful through showing love and kindness to others. Did you know that's all he wants you to do? You don't have to go around saying, thank you, God, for this. Thank you, God, for this. You can just simply tell him thank you when you show somebody else his love. And it doesn't even have to be in words. It could be a hug. It could be, thank you, right? It could be a, I like what you're wearing today. That is such a cool outfit. Did you know praising somebody like that is a great way of showing God's love? So we don't even think about that sometimes, do we? Those words of kindness, those acts of kindness, are the easiest way to show others that they are loved. Let's say a prayer. Can you say a prayer with me? Dear God, you have blessed us with so much. We ask that we be given thankful hearts through you, our Christ. Amen. me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God 
and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? He turned away in a rage. But his servants approached and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was wash and be clean? So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean. Then he returned to the man of God, he and all his company. He came and stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. and splendor mark your deeds and your righteousness endures forever. of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All of your precepts are sure. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. That is my gospel, for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is sure, if we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, 
we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. They say Aslan is on the move, perhaps has already landed. And now a very curious thing happened. None of the children knew who Aslan was any more than you do, but the moment the beaver had spoken these words, everyone felt quite different. This is a favorite moment of mine in the C.S. Lewis novel, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And I have no doubt that likely both Paul and I have referenced this book before in sermons because we love it. But for anyone who has not read this story, it's about four children who find themselves wandering through this kind of magical portal of sorts in the back of a wardrobe and arriving in a land called Narnia, where they encounter a variety of talking animals, hence the beaver I just referenced, and other creatures. When they arrive, Narnia is under the oppressing rule of the White Witch who has created an eternal winter where there is never Christmas, as they describe it. Being only October, I'm not going to dig into that imagery, but in the midst of this eternal winter, they begin to hear whisperings of Aslan's return. Aslan is the great lion whose power and presence incites both fear and incredible peace simply at the mention of his name. And when he arrives, spring returns and hope is restored. There's a whole lot more to the story, both before and after that, but you get the idea. Aslan changes the scene. He brings hope and strength and life to Narnia. After hearing our gospel reading just moments ago, you may find some similar themes, those of restoration of life and hope, praise and rejoicing, and movement. This moment when we hear, Aslan is on the move, is when the word is spreading through Narnia that change is coming and it causes the reader to perhaps get those flutters of hope and promise. You get that sense that the characters in the story, they may not fully understand what it means, but they know that Aslan's movement in Narnia will be the change they have been longing for. Can you feel that in our gospel reading in Luke today? Jesus is on the move. Where is he going? What does it all mean? Well, today's encounter, he's literally on his way to Jerusalem, and that's a place that will surely change the rest of the story. But today, today we find him somewhere in the middle in an unclaimed territory between Galilee and Samaria that was neither Jewish nor Gentile, a place where undesirables like lepers are sent so that nobody has to encounter them, and perhaps they can even be forgotten. But Jesus, 
is on the move. And he fills this in-between place with healing and with compassion, meeting people where they were along the way. And where these ten people were was out. They were, they were turned away from their communities, forbidden from touching or coming within a certain space of others deemed to be cleaner and more acceptable, literally pushed into these in-between margins, making clear who was in and who was out. Already dealing with ailments in their bodies, they are now possibly dealing with ailments of the soul as they are separated and pushed away to suffer where others do not have to see them or perhaps even remember and acknowledge that they exist. As I'm about to tell the story, I realize I should have asked Paul's permission to share it, but I'm doing it anyway. The other day, it's okay, you're okay, it's a good story. You just may have wanted it for yourself at some point. <clears throat> the other day, <laughs> Pastor Paul attended a meeting of some of the downtown business owners. The topic of the day was essentially, what do we do about these homeless people around Morganton? And please don't be mistaken, this was not actually an effort to help, but more of a way of saying, how can we get rid of them? In that meeting, it was said that we offer too many resources in Morganton, and it was even suggested that, <laughs> wait for it, the churches in town should be held accountable for helping these people. Yep. Please, people, mind you, who live right in our midst and yet wander in an in-between place of their own. People who suffer in mind and body every single day, and because of this, they suffer ailments of the soul as they are separated and pushed away, deemed unclean and unacceptable. But Jesus was and is on the move through people like Pastor Paul. After speaking up and boldly calling those in the room to rethink what they were saying, he left at the end of the meeting and sat on a bench with two people he knows who are experiencing homelessness. He talked with them about the situation and listened to what they had to say. He took away that sense of otherness for them, even if for a moment, and met these two people where they were. He let them know that they were not alone and they were not forgotten in their in-between living. I sometimes think that it is the most healing thing, thing of all to experience true community and welcome and to know that you are not alone. Have you ever experienced life in the in-between spaces? It doesn't have to look like leprosy or wandering homeless, but perhaps when you have found yourself in that unknown middle ground, no longer where you came from and not quite sure where you're going, maybe you're living that even now. How was or is Jesus on the move in that space with you? Where do you experience those flutters of hope and renewed promise? Where do you find healing? You know, it's community, I think, that Jesus gives to these lepers at the end of it all. Sure, he healed their skin condition, but he sent them to their priests because their priests were the ones with the authority to reconcile them back into their communities. He sent them into community. But one, noted to be a foreigner, turns back to Jesus to give thanks. It makes me wonder why. What was different about this man? Again, it's noted that he was a foreigner, so perhaps he did not have a priest or a community to return to just yet. Whatever it was, it offers a bit more about healing, doesn't it? See, in this interaction, I think Jesus is teaching us about the nature of faith. To have faith is to live it. And to live it is to give thanks and praise. Jesus didn't say to them as a group at the time of healing that their faith had made them well. No. He said it to the one who returned, the Samaritan man who was so blown away by the grace that had been poured out on him that he lay prostrate, humbled at Jesus' feet in gratitude. And I don't believe it had to do with his physical healing of his skin, of the leprosy condition. Because faith is not cause and effect, as in you pray for something and either it happens or doesn't. 
I think that might be what Jesus is pointing at here, a little bit more of a profound understanding of faith. What if the true healing for the man that day was his healing inside, the healing that opened his eyes to the Savior walking among them? The healing that comes with being seen in the humane light of worthiness. The healing that moved him to worship and praise God for the good thing God had done. I think Jesus' movement here is less about healing flesh and more about healing faith. And what did he do with that experience? Well, after he saw that he was well again, the rest of his response is characterized by four verbs. Turn back. Praise or give glory, prostrate, literally fall on his face, and thank. Jesus highlights the first two verbs by repetition. Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Return and praise play significant roles in Luke's gospel and even kind of bookend it, really. At Jesus' birth, the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. That's in Luke chapter 2. And then after witnessing Jesus' ascension, so we're at the other end of the story now, right? After witnessing Jesus' ascension in the last two verses of this gospel, the disciples worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple blessing God. That's in Luke 24. Return and praise. Frame this gospel suggesting our own movement in response to God's activity in our world. We need healing in this in-between living in which we dwell, where Jesus is on the move and yet the fullness of the kingdom has not arrived yet. We need physical healing after storms that rage and when disease is eating away at our bodies. We long for emotional healing after tragic loss or rejection or failure. We seek relational healing when our different views tear us apart and break us down. Over and again, we find ourselves in that unknown space, no longer where we came from and not quite sure where we're going. But Jesus will meet us there to restore hope and life, even in the darkest of circumstances, to build up our faith to bind us back into community with one another, and to lead us to live lives of praise and gratitude, because it is in that way of living that the scene around us changes. The healed and the still sick, the delivered and the still bound, the successful and the out of work, thankfulness and awareness of God's presence and goodness is available in every circumstance. One could give thanks for their for their pleasant experience, while another thanks God for bolstering them during hardship. And this way of living out our faith changes us. I love what one theologian says about this practice of gratitude and praise in terms of community. She says, to practice gratitude intentionally changes an individual life to be sure. It also changes the character of a congregation. When Christians practice gratitude, they come to worship not just to get something out of it, but to give thanks and praise to God. Stewardship is transformed from from fundraising to the glad gratitude of joyful givers. The mission of the church changes from ethical duty to the work of grateful hands and hearts. That's what we're doing here today. We come to plead with God for healing, seeking to be seen and loved, but also to give praise and thanks for the goodness of God in our lives. To give thanks for the ways that hope and promise continue to change the scene because of who God is and what God has done. And then, like our Samaritan friend and like the other nine who went from that place, we are to go. We can't stay in the comfort of this space. At the end of our worship, we're actually given a sending each week. Something like, go in peace, Christ is with you. Go in peace, remember the poor. Go in peace, share the good news. But we're always told to go, and in some way or another, we are given the charge to live out our faith as those who are changed from our encounter with God. So although I don't really want you to go just yet, because we have a little bit more to do, I say to you today, go in peace and be in community. Go and remember those living in
in the in-between. Go giving thanks and praise for all God has done and will yet do. Jesus is on the move and will meet us there. Amen. Gratitude and humility, let us join together in prayer on behalf of all of God's creation. Gracious God, we give you thanks for bishops, pastors, and deacons. Inspire leaders of the church to proclaim your mighty deeds. Let your saving faith, that your saving faith may be known to all. Hear us, O God. We give you thanks for the land and water, seed time and harvest, breakdown of boundaries we construct between ourselves and the rest of creation. Bring renew, renewal and restoration to places affected by um, pollution and deforestation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. great. We give you thanks for those in our community, nation, and world who work for justice and peace. Guide those who govern to act on behalf of those marginalized by race, ethnicity, or religion. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. Give us we give thanks to we give thanks that you hear the cries of those in need. Restore the community to those who are stigmatized by illness, feel rejected, or who live in isolation. Send healing to all who suffer, especially all those recovering from the devastation of hurricanes. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We 
give you thanks for the healing ministry of your congregation. Equip those who visit, care, and pray for the sick, and those suffering a loss. We pray especially for Marsha Mole, Tom Mills, and the family and friends of Wayne Mushburn, and all those we pray now, out loud, or silently in our hearts. Give insight to doctors, nurses, home health aides, and all practitioners of medical arts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We give you thanks for, the, for your faithful people who have d gone before us to your glory. Renew our trust in your internal promises of mercy, redemption, and new life. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing, and make us ready to share with all in need, through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste, and see. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with the bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.